still can't get over that race at Christmas. One of the worst great ones <laughs> I have ever seen. They were crawling home. Hello and welcome along to the Let's Talk Racing YouTube channel in association with Racing TV. And what a weekend we had on the tipping side of things. Mr. Andrew Blair White, you put up four best bets, three of them won, one being Daily Present at 9 to 4, one being Fayan, the nap at 15 to 2, a 15 to 2 nap, and then to top it all off, John Adams in the last at 8 to 1. You were there, weren't you? What were you, what were you thinking? I can imagine you were cheering home John Adams in the last. Yeah, very much so. Look, it was a great day. You don't get many days like that, uh, and I'm glad I was able to to land a couple of bets on it. It's been a pretty dry enough spell, and, and especially given that my anti-post tipping is, has looked a little bit in the drain this year so far. So it was nice to get a few winners, and thanks very much to all the messages on, on Twitter and and on YouTube as well. Really appreciate it, and we really appreciate all your uh, messages and comments and likes and all that's happened over the last couple of months. We can't really thank you enough. So uh, if you do enjoy this video, please do give it a like. Subscribe to the channel down below if you're new around here, and of course, leave your comments of your best bets for the weekend as well we always love trying to find a rick in a handicap especially the more obscure the better because josh has found a few winners this winter from some of the most obscure places i've ever seen it's wing canton on on stevens day it was taunton one day it's been everywhere so we, we do appreciate it i massively let the side down this weekend on the tipping front so it was good that the team captain came through with a couple of goals a hat trick when we needed it in the final moments of the sunday uh, but on this video we're actually recording this on tuesday we, we usually record it on wednesday night we're recording it on tuesday because unfortunately life has got in the way uh, tomorrow night so if anything comes out between now and declarations or when the video when you see this on, on Thursday morning at nine o'clock with something to do with Enigamine or, or Shishkin then unfortunately we've not covered that but there's so much to get into we're going to review the weekend we're going to look forward to Ascot at the weekend the Clarence House Chase it could be fantastic although we do just need to, to dampen the enthusiasm slightly because we might not get it but I really hope we do in fact I'm going to ask it on Saturday purely for the clash I, I couldn't say no and then we are going to have our best bets at the end as well so we've got plenty to get through uh, starting then with Dysart Dynamo you were there you were at Punchestown and, and you saw this horse win very very impressively what was your thoughts going through the race and, and now you put him up at 25 to 1 for the Ballymore Oaks, a brilliant slip. However, could they go Supreme Novice Hurdle? Ah, you'd think based off what he's done so far that the Supreme's the more likely option. I, I'd probably rank it as a 70-30 uh, to go to the Supreme rather than the Ballymore, which it pains me to say because it's, it's the right horse, probably the wrong race. Uh, but he was superb. Like you're saying about going to Ascot this weekend, I was making it my my due diligence to go down to Punchestown on Sunday to see this horse. I know a lot of people ended up turning up for Bob Ollinger, and he was a nice horse to obviously see as well, but I'm in love with this horse. I've banged on about him so much this year. I know you posed a question to me on the audio podcast a couple of weeks ago. You named me five horses, even over two miles, and I said Dice or Dynamo might be the best of them, and I still believe that. The way he just went out, like you're going out after a furlong thinking he's gone far too quick out in front. And he's pulverised the field. I know people are saying the race has fallen apart. Gilly Billy couldn't go the gallop. Away game couldn't go the gallop. And good old Gringo Dobrell doing what he does and running a solid race. He just absolutely pulverised them. And this, this is a horse with a real strong future wherever he goes. And to be honest, he'll be carrying my money whatever race he's in at Cheltenham. Even if it's in the Supreme? Yeah, I, I, look, I've got to put my money where my mouth is. I've been banging on about him for so much. And... Uh, I just think, obviously it's going to be hard to know where it goes because I think people have already seen what he's done and, and kind of put two and two together that Sir Gerhard must now go up in trip and I don't see that angle at all because if he goes and wins the Dublin Racing Festival by three or four lengths and beats Mighty Potter, why on earth would you go up in trip with him? So Mullins is going to have to have kind of a few quandaries, a few conundrums uh, but unlike Nicky Henderson, I do think Mullins will split these two horses up. So it'll be interesting to see which way the two go. Yeah, I think they will as well. And and I think one of the reasons why people think that it'll be Sir Gerhard is you mentioned how free Dysart Dynamo was at the start of his race. 
He might not be able to get away with that over 2-5 if he goes that hard at Cheltenham, where the Sigurhard seems slightly more relaxed, slightly more straightforward, maybe more professional, and that might mean that he could be better over the longer trip if, if needed. It's going to be interesting to see how he gets on at the Dublin Racing Vessel. I expect him to win. I expect him to beat Mighty Potter and confirm that he is the best two-mile Irish novice in 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 that uh, form line, what what we've seen with Mighty Potter, Three Sharp Life, etc. I still wouldn't be massively convinced on the Supreme or the Ballymore. I'm not I'm not in love with Dysart Dynamo. I think he's a very good horse, very talented, but he's so raw and he's so he, he reminds me of almost under so when he first started um, over in Ireland, and it was just this this absolute tank goes from the front, doesn't stop, ridiculous amounts of ability. Just not sure he's beaten much and and you can say the same about constitution you know you can say the same about john bon um and you can say the same about sigurhard as well i've just it, it's difficult to, to find all these form lines and, and hopefully which we'll touch on later my tie could face john bon at haydock and he obviously finished second to constitution hill at sandown maybe we could get more of a, an interesting gauge on, on how things stand over here anyway. Bob Ollinger, like you mentioned, was at Punchestown. He was probably the, the highlight horse of the card, and he was very impressive, slightly workmanlike. It didn't look 100% straightforward around the bend, but he had that, that turn of foot, got the job done, and went away readily. Were you impressed? I was really impressed, and I'm the first person to hold my hands up that I was a bit snippy about his chase debut. I didn't think he jumped well at Goran. I see people are kind of a bit lukewarm about his performance on Sunday. I thought he jumped a heap better. It was a good race. It was a grade three race in name. If you put a grade two behind, beside it or maybe even a grade one, it wouldn't have been particularly out of place. I thought he jumped well. And you've got to remember, people always forget this when a good horse runs. And I mean it in the nicest possible way, but Henry's horses are running like drains at the moment. You ha only have to see the rest of the... The weekend, he had two odds on shots at Fairy House on Saturday, well beat, stopping to walks, so like Gilly Billy stopped to a walk in the Moscow Flyer. You know, things aren't quite right with his horses at the moment. And Pop Ollinger's still winning by four and a half lengths. Like, what more do people want from him? Like, I know he's even money for the Turners. Look, I think he'll win, it's not a price to be backing at, but I thought he was really good. And I must say, because I know there's a few out there that did follow me in, I got very excited with Gallant John Joe turning into the straight in third and he went too soon for the line and has ended up getting swamped. But I got very, very excited. But there will be a day and the GJJ army will at some stage be celebrating. <laughs> you are the captain um, of that army. I think Bob Ollinger will go straight to Cheltenham now. I can't see for any reason why he'd take on Gallop de Champ at the Dublin Racing Festival. It seemed like that was the plan going into the race, but then afterwards I think Henry was surprised at how well he jumped. Henry made a very big point of saying that we've schooled this horse more than we usually school the rest of them. I think they obviously know how much ability he's got, how much talent, and they want to make sure he doesn't end up on the deck in a race like at Sunday's. I can't see him taking a gallop into Champ. I think it'd be suicidal before the festival, although they're likely to turn up in different races. Not so much that he wouldn't beat gallop into Champ. I just don't think they both need that hard race at, at this stage of, of the campaign. And, and Bob Ollinger, I think his jumping was decent enough to go straight to Cheltenham. Uh, thoughts on Veriverto, who ran on Monday in the first race? I know you put him up for uh, her up for the Boodles. Uh, probably for 98% of the race, I was really happy. Uh, I think... Just that last kind of hundred yards slightly disappointed me. She wasn't very... Uh, she, she's finished off her races really well up until this point. She was a bit soft in the last hundred yards. Maybe kind of ended up... She, she was the one that tried to go with the tight turns turning in and as a result has been burned off a little bit. Other than that, I was really happy with her run. She jumped well again. She made good progress. She looks like the type of horse that needs to be running against slightly lesser horses and obviously you're going to get that in the boodles. The horses she's been running against, you know, Akara Len at Leopardstown, even the tight turns, like these are horses you think are going to run in the triumph. Uh, I was actually really impressed by the winner. I know you'd given it a good word uh, beforehand. Uh, I thought he was really good and I saw after the race he was 33 to 1 for quite a while and I would freely admit I took a little bit of 33 to 1. I thought it was a, a very striking performance. Uh, Vera Verso, she's still 25s, so we got a little bit of better value at 33s, but um, interesting, interesting. I think she might need to run one more time before Chalham. 
Champion Green was pulled up in the same race. His saddle slipped. I can imagine he'll run fairly soonish, and, and they need to get experience into him because you don't want to be going into uh, the Boodles, especially a big handicap with a pulled up. But he was very free, and, and he does need to learn to settle. Uh, Milena Kruna stepped up to three miles. Is he now firmly on the Albert Bartlett radar? Yeah, he probably wants a little bit more experience. Uh, look, he's a very good horse, massive engine, jumped a lot better as well. But it was a poor enough race. There's no getting away from that. He did what he had to do, and you'd want to see him at least running one more time before now in the festival to sharpen him up because the Bartlett's a hard race on an inexperienced horse. Yeah, I would agree with that. And then over at Kempton, uh, Mr. Fisher won the Silvignaco Conti chase over two and a half miles, and it was sad to see... Deffy de Soy's run, I almost want him to be retired, but he's gone through these patches where he doesn't run very well for a season, then comes back rejuvenated. It's been a long time since we've seen him win, and I would I would like to see him retired, if it was my decision anyway. He doesn't look like he's in love with the game anymore. But Mr. Fisher, I was having a, a conversation with a work colleague, actually, um, and he's a horse that seems to love it when the sun's out. I think he's one of those horses who wants to put his feet up when it's 30 degrees outside, sun on his back, and he'll turn up. But when the going gets tough, he just he doesn't get going. Um, it was the case in, in the Ryanair. It was the case in the King George. Stepping up to three miles isn't his game. He's definitely a two and a half miler. And if if the Ryanair was good ground and it was the, the sun was shining, he might have an each way squeak. But I don't think he's going to win the race. And I think Grade Two, unfortunately, is just his level. Would you agree with that? Very much so. Look, it looked a race that was full of those types of horses. I agree with your sentiments about Deffy de Soy. I think the only two options I could see is you pull stumps, which I think is the more logical option, or if you're really clutching at straws, you might give him a spin back over hurdles. It just looks like he's completely fallen out of love with chasing. His jumping looks odd. He's very skyward. It just doesn't look like he's... It looks like something's at him, to be honest. And if that's the case... You know, you're kind of tarnishing his reputation by running him in these races and him pretty much finishing last. So uh, you'd like to see them maybe pull stumps sooner rather than later. Interesting to see what they do with him. I think they'll retire him. But they might give him one spin over hurdles, see if that reignites the, the coals. Uh, Cobbler's Dream won the Lanzarote, a very competitive handicap. And there's actually one horse I do want to talk about in this. Finished third, Call Me Lord, trained by Nicky Henderson. I've got a feeling he could run very well in a Coral Cup. He's got the right profile. He's got a very similar profile, actually, to William Henry, who won the race a couple of years ago, uh, being that he went chasing. It didn't really work out. Back over hurdles, it was a good run. You've got to remember this horse was once a 160-rated hurdler, albeit he was never that good, but he was 160 once. He's, he's now down to, to 144, I think he ran off at the weekend. He might be on a winnable mark. It wouldn't be unlike Nicky Henderson to, to ready one of those old horses for a big competitive handicap. And he's clearly got the ability on his best days to run well. He's one I'm definitely looking at for the Coral Cup. Uh, three under through five on the Hampton Chase at Warwick, the grade two. And connections are persisting that they stick over three miles, where I think the logical decision would be to go to the National Hunt Chase. I think it's the only race that he'd have a squeak in. I think it's suicidal. I don't think he'd, he'd beat any horse to the, to the first fence in the three-mile race, let alone to the line. National Hunt Chase isn't an option because Adrian Heskin can't ride, and they're very keen to have Adrian Heskin on. Does he have any sort of chance of beating the likes of a Hoysenor, Brave Man's Game, Fury Road or Gallop and Deschamps over three miles at Cheltenham? It doesn't look like it. He looks a little bit short of speed. I do agree with you. I can understand their decision because I think he jumped super at Warwick, but he's not the easiest horse in the world. He's got an odd enough head carriage and Adrian Heston's got a very good kind of rapport with the horse. And you have to remember with the National Hunt Chase as well, like when it's down to amateur jocks, there's only really four or five guys that you'd really want on your horses. Patrick Mullins going to ride something of Willie's, maybe Statler. Jamie Codd might be on Fred. Derek O'Connor will be on something of JP's. You know, you're down to... Now, there's still some good jockeys that you could get. You could get a Barry O'Neill, a Rob James, but you'd probably end up going for an English amateur. And with all due respect, they're not as good as the Irish amateurs. So... You know, you have to bear that in mind, especially if you've got a slightly tricky horse and 300 through 5 has got such a good rapport with Heskin. I can't dispute them trying to go down that route. And it is obviously, it's the better race. It's the grade 1 race and connections have done well this year. So you might as well throw your hat in the ring. 
Staghorn won the Leamington Novices Hurdle. Scipion was third, my tip. I thought he ran well, actually. I do think a step up to three miles, I think he'd be a good horse, considering he's got very little race course experience. I think he is one to keep on the right side of. But Staghorse, Staghorse, Staghorn, a classy recruit from the flat, rated over, well above 100. And the Ballymore this year is an open race. Not many of the Leamington Novice Hurdle winners go on to win the Ballymore, but do you think he might have a squeak in, in what does look an open division? That just wouldn't be the race I'd end up going for with him. I think he's a nice horse, and he actually jumped super at Warwick, I thought, considering he was scruffy on his hurdling debut. I would wait with this horse and run him in the in the two and a half of Aintree. I think a slightly flatter track, let him get into a nice rhythm out in front. It's probably going to be a weaker race, Realistically, you're probably not going to have an Irish horse in there. I think he'd have a very good chance against English novices in the two and a half at Aintree. As for in the Ballymore, for a young... Like, I know he's a hardy horse on the flat and has ran plenty of times at the, on the flat, but a third start over hurdles being the Ballymore could be all a little bit too much too soon. And I'd favour going to Aintree with that horse instead. Sporting John won the Potemps qualifier. Was there anything in this that you thought, I need to take that one on for the final? Yeah, it wasn't a race that kind of did too much for me because obviously there was only the seven runners because everyone was going to qualify. Uh, and I, I thought Philippe ran a nice race for Fergal. I don't think he's going to win a Potemps. The G Gordon horse obviously started a Burleys in there again. He's too high in the weights to win a Potemps. McNally's horse, the jam man, has, has run at Cheltenham a couple of times before and is disappointed. So it wouldn't probably be a qualifier I would be falling over. Sporting John, unfortunately, like if he'd come third or something like that, you'd make a very viable case for him in the per temps. But uh, unfortunately, I think they've blown their load a little bit early there. And I think he's going to have to run in the stairs hurdle. Wouldn't be without a, a small each way squeak in that race either. But... Uh, I think, unfortunately, off 156, he's got no chance in the per temps. Yeah, we're going to be talking about the stairs hurdle. When we flick through some interesting news this week, if you follow me on Twitter, you follow Andrew, you might know this anyway, but I'm going to flick through for those that haven't. In this world out for the season, um, we acknowledge that he had a setback. I spoke to Harry Skelton, and he said that he was touch and go for Cheltenham. It looks like they've, they've pulled stumps on the, the hurdling campaign this year, and they're going to wait until Christmas time. He's also um, entire, which means he's still got his nads um, and I do think they want to, to protect that as well. Champ stays hurdling. Now I think the finishing line spoke to uh, Frank Berry who's the racing manager of JP McManus and he said that Champ stays hurdling. I went and spoke to the, the team at Nicky Henderson's and they confirmed that so I think he's going to run in the Cleave hurdle. All I ask for is Chantry House runs reasonably well in the Cotswold and then there's no way he was much better in the long walk hurdle and he's got a very unorthodox way of jumping fences as well. Good to see him staying hurdling and it's good for that slip. St Felician who's entered this weekend at Lingfield won't be running. I think the two options for him are the Contenders hurdle at Sandown or the Red Mills, the grade two. And then Pied Piper is well, the juvenile. And um, I think that we probably see him at the Dublin Racing Festival unless that ground was heavy where Phil Dor could turn up. I, I think it's very, very unlikely. While well, I said that he was sore after the run the other day, I think he's fine now. And the, the plan is the Dublin Racing Festival with him. And then a horse just to put in your tracker that I've, I've heard good things about this week is Gun Runner Cash, trained by Gordon Elliott. I don't actually think he's on the racing post at the moment, but one to keep an eye on. And I think he's done very well in some schooling races at home. So he could be a smart recruit to bumpers. Let's now preview the weekend. And there's plenty of great action across the cards. Unfortunately, there's almost too much action to go through it race by race. Uh, but Lingfield has got the, the million pound weekend. It looks a fantastic two days of jump racing. They're putting on on the Friday and uh, Sunday. They've got an all-weather card sandwiched in between. And there's some really nice horses as well. Some Irish support in Darvistan going over to take on Bruin Upper Storm. It's brilliant for the game. And I hope, hope over the coming years this meeting can build and build and build. Maybe get a, a listed or graded status on some of the bigger races. Because the prize money is fantastic. And it's a good time to have those races looking towards the Cheltenham Festival as well a good time for prep runs we're not going to go through it race, race by race but we will include Lingfield in our best bets at the end three main races we are going to touch on and the first one is going to be the Clarence House Chase at Ascot on Saturday it's the big one Enigamine Shishkin at this stage they're both in it they're meant to face Amula Gold a first flow and Hitman A do you think Enigamine is going to run? 
That's not what we wanted to hear. Yeah, no, I don't want to obviously pour cold water on the fire. I just don't think it's going to happen. Like, uh, unfortunately, the the exchanges would indicate that Mullins is having a couple of kind of second thoughts about the whole thing. I think he's now looking at the Dublin Racing Festival, the Grade One over two miles. It's going to be one of the worst races you're ever going to see. I don't think Shakan's right at the moment. The vibes aren't good. And I think the best horse he'd, he'd run it against in the Dublin Race Festival would be Captain Guinness. And off well, novice chase form, he, he clearly holds that horse. You know, Dunvegan might rock up. Jeez, he wouldn't be getting the sweats about him either. Would he not struggle for speed against something like Battle Over Doyen? Yeah, perhaps so. Battle Over Doyen, a real speedy type. You know, actually probably should have a run on the flat over a mile too, just to sharpen him up. Still can't get over that race at Christmas. One <laughs> of the worst great ones <laughs> I have ever seen. <laughs> they were crawling home. Yeah, no, I think it would be a poor race. I think it wouldn't really matter that the ground would be against him and I think he might take the easier option. Obviously, you want for the game of racing and the sport of racing for him to turn up. If he turns up, I still think Shish can beat him. An hour and a half after this video is uploaded on Thursday morning, you will know. So I hope it's the good news. I've spoken to the Nicky Henderson camp and they think that Enigamine will run. I don't think they've got any steer on that. They're just hoping that he does. Plenty of people have said that Ascot right-handed would actually be in Enigamine's favour. Would you agree with that? Yeah, hard to know. I'd say probably a little bit in favour of Enigamine just because he's had the slight tendency to jump ever so slightly right in his races and Shishkin ever so slightly left. And we saw Altior once or twice at, at Ascot struggle with, with those fences and he jumped kind of markedly out to his left on occasions, especially when winning this race a couple of years ago. And I suppose people will have that in the back of their mind that that could happen with Shishkin. Uh, look, they're both really good horses, and I suppose, like we both say it, that I think, I speak on behalf of both of us, that we probably favour Shishkin to beat an Ergamine. But that being said, you just don't know how good an Ergamine is, and like the, the vibes are so, so good about him in Mullins' camp. They believe they can't be beat. Henderson's lot believe Shishkin can't be beat. Well, one of them has to be beat, and I suppose you're just hoping that the two of them if they were to run against each other, that they both jump around, there's no hard luck stories, nobody ends up on the deck, and you get a proper burn up turning in. I know with Ascot, I don't know why it is, but when they turn in in the jumps racing, the bell starts ringing, and I want the bell to start ringing, and the two of them to be locked head for head, and we'll see who's the better one. I would love a dead heat at Ascot on Saturday, and then we go into the champion chase with the, the rematch of dreams. If you're not doing anything on Saturday and you're planning on watching it at home, and there is a way of getting to Ascot, I would thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly recommend that. It could be fantastic. Um, another Nicky Henderson horse that runs this weekend that's on the top of many people's list is John Bon, and he runs in the Supreme Trial at Haydock. We touched on earlier that he's going to potentially run against Mai Tai of Harry Fry and he could reoppose a good risk at all. He's going to be a short price, he's not a betting proposition, but you want to see him do it well. And you almost want to see him beat Mai Tai just as impressively as Constitution Hill, especially for myself, who at this stage, John Bond would be my number one pick for the Supreme. Yeah, I think you would be. I, th I think the key with John Bond is you'd love him to just run in a race that they actually go any type of gallop, you know, that they're not just fluting around at the start you know somebody takes it up uh, and gives him a lead because I, I kind of just want to see him do it I have no doubt that he'll do it off a strong pace but I kind of just want to see him do it so that the naysayers can kind of go back and in their box with their constitution hill stopwatches at the, at the helm like some of these people like I, I know it's a great edge people that keep the times and stuff like that I just can't buy into it at all like they're they're judging John Bond to not be a good horse because of his times and you're there going when well, he's running like he's coming to the finish line head in chest like he could have been going so much quicker so I don't know how that anyway correlates up but you're just hoping he, he, he further enhances his reputation and this Supreme is, is turning into one of the biggest burn-ups we've seen in a, a long, long time, and may that continue. It would be an absolute dream to see all four turn up in that first race in March. That would just be frightening, especially if they all go in there unbeaten this season. Alaho is also entered at Thurles on Sunday. So is Jerry Colombe over two miles and seven. Could that be a hint he might go Albert Bartlett? They're trying to get a bit of experience into him, maybe? Yeah, I suppose so. Uh, looks like a logical option. I think if Jerry Colombe was to, to go that way I think you would probably be be thinking that that's fair enough because the the owners of Journey with Me is going to run in the Ballymore and 
I think, I know some people are still banging on about Ginto going up in trip, I just can't see it. I think he'll run in the Ballymore as well, and Gordon might be doubly represented with Hollow Games and one other. Maybe that is Jerry Kalam. I don't think Alaho will run, personally speaking, unless it's a really... It's a race that cuts up loads and they see it almost just as being a, an album photo, a Tremor-esque race course gallop. Uh, but other than that, I suspect we won't see him. But w- would love to see him. He's a very good horse. And then finally, we've got our best bets for this weekend. And you had a terrific time last weekend, so I'm going to let you take the lead on this one. Yeah, I know. Dangerous <laughs> after the weekend I had. But look, a mixture of, of everywhere, really. Starting off Friday at Lingfield, 3 o'clock rake is, is a three-mile novice chase. I quite like the Tristan Davis horse. Fantastic ass in that. You can get four to one at the moment jocked up with Sam on board he's run some really nice races I think he's a good horse might be one for the Scottish National this year as a novice Uh, Haydock at Saturday the 12.50 race two and a half mile novice chase I think he'll cut up quite a lot Uh, Manella Dram is in this race and he's also in the novice chase at Lingfield I think he'll run in this because McCain is more likely I suspect to run a horse at Haydock than going down to Lingfield I think he'd have a really good chance as well going back left handed lesser race back up in trip I think a lot going for him there and then two from Ireland Navin the bumper one that everyone should be watching whether you want to back him or not is, is irrelevant whether you should be watching is Joyeux Machan uh, Nolan's horse in the last the bumper race and the reason for that is he was the only one that turned in on the bridle with Facile Vega on Stephen's Day he's the only one that went with him and if you're a fan of Facile Vega for the champion bumper you should be watching that horse I think he should take a world of beating at Navan. And Thurless on Sunday, 2.05, handicap hurdle. Horse I've slightly gone over a cliff with is Big King for Barry Connell. He's been given a long time since a disappointing run at Galway. He's well handicapped, sure to go well. There might be a bit money around for him. I'm hoping for an each way price stop. Joy you, Mashan to boost that Facile Vega form. I will be watching that one. My four best bets, I'm going to quickly run through them. Remastered at 5-1 to one in the Peter Marsh chase at Haydock. I think Robert Guy is a fantastic horse, but I'm not sure he could give a, a horse like Remastered almost a stone and a half. The last run with Remastered was almost a confidence builder after being on the deck in the Labyrinth Trophy. I expect him to build on that, and I think he'll go very, very close, and he should have his ideal conditions. The other one would be Il Rodoto uh, in the two-mile novice chase at Lingfield on Sunday. I think I think he'll favour this over the handicap on the Friday and I think he's a very good horse. I think it would take a lot of beating. At two then at Ascot as well on Saturday, one in the 110. And that's Cobra Lobo for John Joe O'Neill. He's getting on, he's a 10-year-old, but he was second in the race last year and he's back to his last winning mark. I've got a feeling that they gave him a light time, they want him on a, on a, on a competitive mark and they want to win a good race something like this and he's run well here and then the 145 stellar magic at 13 to 2 each way in the holloway's hurdle it's a shame that's not a grade 2 anymore but this horse has got a seriously seriously good form book he won his point to point beating pay the piper um, and then he won on hurdling debut and then on his other start his next start uh, he beat Alaphilippe. He's off 137. He was pulled up at Warwick uh, at the back end of last season. We didn't see him then for 300 days until he went to Haydock and was just touched off by up for parole. It was a 300-day layoff. I think you can forgive him for maybe not seeing out the race. I think he's very entitled to come on for that run. I'd actually make him my nap of the weekend. Stella Magic, 13-2 uh, to two each way. Fascinating weekend and, and very best of luck if you are going to Ascot on Saturday. Hopefully see a couple of you there as well. And uh, thank you very much for watching the video. If you did enjoy it, please hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you soon.